Hi, this is Steve Weinrieb, and I'm here to show you a great new feature in Photoshop CC 2014 called Color Lookup Tables. Color Lookup Tables are a way to create color looks for your images that you can use in still or video. Color Lookup Tables was added to Photoshop by the brilliant engineer Chris Cox, and you can find it in the File menu under the Export submenu and there it is right there color lookup tables but before you export color lookup tables you need to add adjustment layers adjustment layers are layers that are found through the adjustment layer panel or from the adjustment layer menu at the bottom of the layers panel this image is a good image to start with to work with color lookup tables in creating our color look and you can actually get this image for free you can download it from creative.adobe.com slash add-ons and that's the Adobe add-ons website just do a search for Chris Cox or LUTs and that will bring you to this file as well as some sample adjustment layers that you can use to branch off to create a color look of your own. In any case, in my tutorial I want to show you how to create color looks and get you started. So what I've done here is I've created a color look using some adjustment layers and the adjustment layers you use really may depend just on your own personal preference and experience with adjustment layers and what you like to use for adjustment layers. I use curves but you might consider using levels instead of curves depending what your needs are. I have a couple of vibrance adjustment layers and then I have a selective color adjustment and I use selective color a lot to do color adjustments but you might want to use a hue saturation adjustment layer or color balance so it's really up to you and it depends on what you like to use. In any case, let's get started. I'm going to show you how I did this. And I, again, use this image that can be downloaded from the Adobe Add-ons website. And I also have a couple of other images, just photographs that I've taken, in this case with people, because I was doing something that I wanted to use, a look that I wanted to use with people photos, but also could be applied to other photos as well. So I brought up a few images, a couple with people and one without. And I'm going to walk you through the process of how I created it and you can see how it looks applied to those images. So the first thing I did was I wanted to add a contrast boost, especially in the midtones, lighten up the midtones, and I'm going to open up my curves adjustment and you can see it here. So what I've done is I've added a boost to the midtones in the curves, and I didn't want to blow out the highlights, so I anchored the highlight end of the curve down, and I also anchored the shadow side of the curve down. I'll show you without that curves adjustment again, this is what the image would look like. And with the curves adjustment, as you can see, that, that pumps up the midtones and has the effect of adding a little bit of contrast. Let's take a look at our first vibrance adjustment. The first vibrance adjustment I added, I did a negative vibrance. If you go to my blog, which you'll see a link to at the end of this tutorial, you'll see a tutorial on negative vibrance. It's a technique I love to use is basically pulling vibrance down by adding negative vibrance affect predominantly the less saturated colors and the already saturated colors won't be so much affected. Then I added another vibrance adjustment and this one is applied in hard light blending mode. If this were in normal blending mode it wouldn't have the same effect. So by using this contrast mode hard light which adds a little more contrast than the soft light blending mode this adjustment blends in with the underlying colors, pumps up the contrast, but also has the effect of doing what I did here with negative vibrance, which is reducing the saturation in the less saturated colors of the image. Then I added a selective color adjustment. My goal with selective color adjustment was to create kind of an apocalyptic look, which was what I was looking for for the people pictures and the nature scenes. So in the reds, for example, I shifted the reds by pumping them up. In the yellows, I subtracted some magenta, subtracted cyan, basically shifting the colors of the yellows. This would shift the colors of the skin tones and the whole time keeping an eye on the swatches in this image. We have some great flesh tone swatches as well as the primary colors. We have a spectrum and a gray ramp and by using these and also just dragging this adjustment over to one of my people images, I could see how this was affecting the skin tones along with the other adjustment layers that I created already. And I'm working my way through, and this is what's great about select the color adjustment, is you not only have the primaries, you can affect the whites, the neutrals, and the blacks as well. If you watched any of my other tutorials, you'll know this is one of my favorite color adjustments in Photoshop. The order of the adjustments is important too. If I took the selective color adjustment and I moved it below the curves adjustment layer, 
you can see that changes the color look in the image. Let me undo that, and that shifts the colors around. So where your adjustment layers are in the Layers panel, the hierarchy here does have an effect on the net result. Then I added a Levels Adjustment. In the Levels Adjustment, I simply did a classic 3 in the output levels in the black and 252 in the highlights, in the whites. And what that has the effect of doing is it basically prevents clipping in the black end or the white end. So I added contrast. Contrast is added both with the curves and the selective color adjustment. But this way I was able to prevent clipping on the highlight and the shadow end by using the levels adjustment. So let's take a look at how this works with the other images. What I'll do is I'll simply shift click these layers in the layers panel, take my move tool, drag those layers up to this test image and down into this test image and that gives you a good idea of how these adjustment layers affect that test image. I'll drag those same layers up to the fisheye image and then down into the canvas, let go, and we see what effect this has on this image that doesn't have people in it, but you can see the green take on a different hue, a little green is pulled, some blue is added in the shadows, contrast is boosted, and this takes on kind of an apocalyptic look, which is the name that I gave the look. Let's go back to this image, and to export this as a color look, go to the File menu, Export, and then Color Lookup Tables. In the Color Lookup Tables panel, you don't need all these different types of color lookup tables. Uh, they, what I do generally is just create a cube, but some programs you use might require a different format. Also, you might want to apply this as a color space, as an ICC profile, but I just use a cube. 3D cube, which I'll apply using the color lookup adjustment. As far as grid points, I like to leave that at 32. Increasing that can make this file considerably larger and really slow things down a little bit. You might want to just leave that at 32 unless you have a program that requires a larger number or you have a reason for using a higher number that you know. But otherwise, especially if you're just getting going with color lookup tables, just leave that at its default. For the description, the description takes on the name of the file. I'm going to click OK, and that brings up the Save dialog. And this is where you give the name to the color lookup adjustment and just call this Zombie Apocalypse, which will be the Zombie Apocalypse look. And I'm going to save it into this folder. You can navigate to choose where to save the file. And the file is now saved. Now I can go to any other image. I'll go to this test image here, add a Color Lookup Adjustment Layer, go up here to the 3D LUT. I'm going to choose Load 3D LUT at the very top. And there's my LUT file, this Zombie Apocalypse Cube. Double click it. And the file is applied. That color look is applied to this image. Go back to my other image. And let me just back up in Histories to revert to the way it looked when I first opened it. And again, I'll add a Color Lookup Adjustment. Load 3D LUT, and there is the zombie apocalypse look. So that is simply one way to create a beautiful color look in Photoshop that you can apply to images or to video over and over in Photoshop or any program that will allow you to use a 3D LUT. Here's another example of a color lookup table I created called Desaturated Warm. And this simply uses a curves adjustment, again, pumping up the midtones a little bit, a selective color adjustment once again. And in this selective color adjustment, I added warm tones and pulled some of the cool tones and then a vibrance adjustment layer and again you can see I'm kind of repeating myself here I'm using negative vibrance again but you can go the opposite direction this is just a look I was creating using these adjustment layers and I created a color lookup table for this I exported it using file export as I showed you a minute ago export color lookup tables and let me go to this image again back up to the original image. And again, I'll add a color lookup adjustment, low 3D LUT, and there it is right there, the LUT that I saved from the color lookup tables export feature. 
and that creates another look, desaturated warm look, which I can use over and over and over in other images, and even tweak it from here by adding other adjustment layers if I need to. Or I could reduce the opacity of the layer, or I could change the blending mode of the layer. So loads of options, as you always have in Photoshop, but with this great new feature to create color looks called Color Lookup Tables. I'm going to post these color looks at the Adobe Add-ons website as well, but I hope you create your own color looks. Enjoy. Again, this is Steve Weinrieb, and I will see you next time.